Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Many thought that California would be a true North contender in 2020. But the Golden Bears went just 1-3. and three. But that one win came in their season finale against Oregon. And that gives California just a little bit of momentum going into 2021. So again, guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert here to predict and analyze California's schedule and record for this 2021 college football season. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos. And also make sure to check out everything down in that description below. Some of the best offers in the country down there are expert picks down there over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Make sure to sign up for, for those today before the season starts, because I promise you guys it's a deal and offer that you're not going to want to miss out on. So we take a look at California going into 2021. Now again, many thought, including ourselves, they could be a true North contender in 2020. We actually picked them to beat Oregon, and that prediction turned out to be right. It just didn't matter in the grand scheme of things, because the whole Pac-12 schedule got thrown into a disarray right from the get-go. But California now enters 2021 with higher expectations. High expectations, tons of experience coming back. Maybe this is the year they can finally contend in the North. And for me, for Justin Wilcox, that all begins on the offensive side of the ball. He's a defensive-minded coach. The defense has always been solid for the Golden Bears. It's whether or not they can take that next step offensively. And they can do that this year. Eight starters are back. They're led by Chase Garbers, the most experienced quarterback in the conference with 23 starts to his name. If he can stay healthy, California's offense can skyrocket. Four offensive linemen are back. Four of his top five pass catches are back. Christopher Brown Jr. is back at running back. All of the pieces are there for California to have a special year on the offensive side of the ball. But again, it all falls on Chase Garbers. When you look at the defense, it's always a strength of Justin Wilcox. He's a defensive-minded coach. Four starters are back, including Cameron Good at linebacker. And then you have Elijah Hicks and Daniel Scott leading the secondary. 85 games combined between those two players. It's the very senior and experienced secondary. One that will be one of the best in the conference. One that was one of the best in the nation last year, ranking 23rd nationally, allowing just 197.8 passing yards per game. So the talent is there defensively. Even though they don't have as many returning starters, they're going to be just fine on defense because that's what California does. Everybody knows that. They're going to shut you down. It's just whether or not the offense can put up the points. And this is the year they might be able to do that. So we take a look at their schedule. California has a relatively tough schedule, especially early on, from about the season opener against Nevada through the Friday night game at Oregon. The schedule is pretty tough. And then that back end at Stanford and at UCLA, tack on USC in there as well, it's a pretty difficult schedule for the Golden Bears. It's going to be a struggle to get to the postseason, but the talent is there to do it. They kick off the year against Nevada at home, and right off the bat, we have to say this is not a slouch game. This is not an easy game. Most people look at that and say it's a Mountain West team versus a Pac-12 team. Give the edge to the Power 5 team. No. Nevada is good. They are a Mountain West title favorite for a reason. 19 starters are back, including 10 on defense, and they're led by Carson Strong at quarterback, a guy who many project to be a top four quarterback in the NFL draft next year. First round draft pick potentially. Carson Strong's the real deal. This Nevada team is the real deal. So California has to be very cautious of the Wolfpack in the season opener. Remember, it wasn't too long ago we saw Nevada pull off an upset against Purdue in the season opener. But I do believe the Golden Bears have enough to win this game. It is at home. I believe their defense rises to the occasion. And while Nevada has a lot coming back on defense, this is going to be one of the better offenses they see all year. And I believe California gets the job done, but it may be closer than many expect. 1-0 for California. They then travel to TCU. Travel to TCU. And we've seen uh, a couple years ago, we saw a classic between California and TCU in that Cheez-It Bowl with a million combined interceptions between the two. Uh, we shouldn't see that again now in 2021. Let's hope we don't see that. Let's hope we see a cleaner and better game. Maybe more high scoring. Last time it was just 10-7. to 7. TCU went 6-4 and four last year, guys, and this feels like a year they can maybe break through in the Big 12. Uh, obviously, you have teams like Oklahoma and Iowa State that are going to be the heavy favorites, but TCU's that dark horse in the conference this year that could surprise. And that's because they returned so much talent on offense. 
That includes their star quarterback in Max Duggan. And that includes an offense that averaged 214.7 rushing yards per game. And Duggan attributing to a lot of that, as he's a dangerous dual threat quarterback. The Horned Frogs also returned seven starters on defense, a top 30 unit in 2020. And the major number I'm looking at here is while we believe that California's defense improves, while we believe there's still a strength, they allowed 169.2 rushing yards per game last year. And again, we just said TCU averaged over 200 rushing yards per game. With a dual threat quarterback and a dangerous backfield loaded with talent at running back, with the game being down at TCU as well, I just don't see California having enough to pull off this win. TCU is trending in the right direction, and they will beat the Golden Bears. We believe California does defeat Sacramento State. Doesn't need to talk much on that. So they're 2-1, and one, and then they start conference play, and they travel to Washington. Well, if you remember, the last two games between California and Washington, the Golden Bears have won. But the last two games have been won by California by a combined, combined three points. Combined three points. So the game's been very, very close. And California has won those games behind the strength of their defense. Well, the thing is, Washington now pretty much returns everybody from last year's squad. A, a unit, a team, that should have won the Pac-12 North. They went 3-1, and one, did win the Pac-12 North, really, but did not get to play in the championship game because of COVID. The Huskies return everybody now in year two under Jimmy Lake. And the thing I really love about Washington is I think their defense will be one of the best in the conference, and I believe their offense is going to get better week in and week out. And three weeks into the year, with already a test under their belt as the Huskies travel to Michigan, I believe they're going to have solved most of their quarterback issues, whether they decide to start Dylan Morris or Sam Hewitt. With a strong defense, offense being figured out, a strong running game for Washington as well that could exploit this California rushing defense, in Seattle, revenge on their mind, I believe Washington gets this win. Too many factors to me and too many advantages to me go in favor of the Huskies. They finally get that win over California, and the Golden Bears are 2-2. Two and two. They then return home to take on Washington State. Now, I would say this would be a major trap game for California if it were on the road, if we're in Pullman, but it's not. It's in Berkeley. And you look at Washington State. They are a team that is getting there. Year two for Nick Rolovich, a very young team trying to implement that run-and-shoot offense that really, the offense should be fine. It's the defense that's the major cause of concern as they allowed 307 passing yards per game last year. I believe Chase Garbers has a field day against the Cougars in this one. Again, home field advantage will play a big role. Washington State's coming off back-to-back -back games against USC and Utah. They're going to be beaten up. They don't want to face a California team that's balanced on both sides of the ball. Golden Bears get a quick and easy win, I think, over the Cougars. And they go into their bye week, one game above 500 at 3-2. and two. Coming out of their bye week, they take on Oregon on Friday night. So huge that California gets that week of rest there. But unfortunately, Oregon gets a week of rest too. The Ducks will be coming off a bye on October 15th. Remember, we said California beat Oregon 21-17 last year. That was their season finale. Uh, and obviously, if this was a game that was being played at California, if the game were in Berkeley like it were last year, I might be picking another upset. I might be picking another upset in favor of California. But the game is in Eugene. And Oregon, the reigning Pac-12 champion, back-to-back Pac-12 champions, is going to be just a different animal in the conference. I think they're in a league of their own. They return so much talent. They've got the RPO offense led by Joe Moorhead, Anthony Brown, C.J. Verdell, Travis Dye, top two pass catchers coming back. And then you've got your defense that is strong and has talent at all three levels, defensive line, linebacker, and secondary. Oregon is just too stacked. And coming off a week of rest of their own with home field advantage on a Friday night, revenge on their mind after falling to California last year, I just don't see California being able to pull off this victory. They drop it, they're 3-3. Three and three. And I know exactly what you're thinking. You're looking at this schedule right now and you're going, hold on. They're three and three, and they've just alternated wins and losses. Correct. And then you're going to say, well, all losses have come on the road. You really don't think they'll win a road game? I don't. Not in that first six game stretch. Again, the home games are favorable Nevada, Sacramento State, Washington State. None of those really strike much fear into me. Maybe Nevada might be the toughest out of those three. Well, the road games are TCU, Washington, and Oregon, arguably the top two teams in the North, and a very dangerous non conference game in the Big 12. So yeah, it's a very first difficult six-game stretch, but one I think California splits, and they're at 500 going into the back half of their schedule. The beauty of this, guys, is that those next three games for California 
are relatively, if you want to use the word, easy. They're playing three teams that are going to be in the lower levels of the Pac-12. Very well could be the 10th, 11th, and 12th best team in the conference in Colorado, Oregon State, and Arizona. We'll start with Colorado here. The biggest thing for California in this game is stopping the run because that's what Colorado's going to do in 2021. They did it last year. They're going to do it again. They surprised a lot of people by going 4-2 and two in Carl Durrell's first year. I wouldn't expect a similar result in 2021. But they do have a dangerous dual threat quarterback in Brendan Lewis now, now that Sam Neuer has transferred out to Oregon State. They have Alex Fontenot. They have Jarek Broussard. They've returned six starters on defense, but the defense allowed 31.7 points per game, and that's Colorado's downfall. They can run all they want. They rushed over 200 yards per game last year on average. But the defense will be their downfall in Berkeley with an offense that, again, I believe takes a major step forward. I believe California exploits that Colorado defense. Colorado will put up some points of their own, but California simply has too much. They defeat the Buffaloes. I believe they defeat Oregon State at home as well. They lost to the Beavers 31-27 to last year. But Oregon State loses Jamar Jefferson. And I know Jamar Jefferson doesn't make up the entire team, but he was their workhorse on offense. He carried that offense. Well, now you might see Oregon State become a little bit more pass-happy. Whether it's Tristan Jebbia, Chance Nolan, or Sam Neuer, as we just mentioned, under center at quarterback, who knows? But they're going to have to quickly build chemistry with their wide receivers. And Oregon State's defense was nothing special. Even though they returned seven starters, they allowed 217.6 rushing yards per game. I believe Christopher Brown goes off in this game against Oregon State. Very similar to the way Jefferson went off against so many opponents for the Beavers. Brown will do the same now to Oregon State. California has racked up two straight victories, and we'll go ahead and make it three straight victories with a road win at Arizona. Now, I don't want to say this is going to be an easy win. You always hate to say easy win for any conference game. But Arizona is without a doubt the worst team in the Pac-12 heading into 2021. They are in the worst position of any team in the conference going into 2021. 0-5 last year, new head coach in Jed Fish, who has not been at the college ranks in a long, long time. Potential freshman quarterback under center. A defense that gave up nearly 40 points per game last year. Arizona has a long ways to go to climb and build themselves out of the gutter. Out of the cellar of the Pac-12. California should win this game with ease despite it being on the road. And just like that, they've won three straight games. They've clinched bowl eligibility. They're sitting at 6-3. and three. So a very rough start. That middle stretch from October 23rd to November 6th, that's the key. California needs to sweep those games, and they'll be sitting pretty going into their final three games. In the final three games, they kick it off against USC, in-state rivalry game. When you look at USC, guys, they've dominated this game against California. California actually has won just one game against USC since 2004, and that was just in 2018, very recently. I feel like the gap is closing, though. Wilcox is doing a very good job, and Clay Helton for USC has continuously failed to live up to expectations. He needs to live up to them now in 2021. Well, here's the problem, at least for this game. We mentioned how strong California's secondary is. Strong this year, strong last year. 23rd ranked passing defense in the country. Well, USC is an air raid offense, guys. They just like to air it out. And it's going to be a battle between California's secondary and Keaton Slovis. And this passing attack led by Graham Harrell, the offensive coordinator for USC. I look at this game, guys. USC coming off a very physical game against Arizona State. One that very well could determine who wins the Pac-12 South. Could see them being hung over if they lose that game. Or a little high, thinking they've clinched the division. This has the makings of an upset for me. And that's what we're going to pick here. I believe in the years past, California has not had the offensive capability to hang with USC. They've had the defense to do it. But the offense goes quick three and out, can't move the ball. The means means the defense gets tired, and they ultimately lose to USC. I don't think that happens this year. I feel now that California has the offense to hang with USC. They have the defense to stop the Trojans. And I believe they get their fourth straight victory and finally take down USC for the, just the second time since 2004. They round out the year at Stanford and at UCLA, two very difficult games you hate to see back-to-back road games to conclude the year. Another contributing factor to that USC game, tack on that senior night, senior day. More emotions there, another reason that you might want to go with California. But you look at Stanford. Stanford, California lost the Cardinal by one point last year, 24-23. to They missed a PAT right there at the end of the game. Missed an extra point. Lost by one. Should have been a game that they may have won. 
you want to say there's revenge in the cards for California. You want to say there's revenge there. But on the road, I just don't see it. I know it's all in state. But Stanford's a team that I just can't quite figure out. I think they're a team that beats some teams they shouldn't, maybe loses to some teams they shouldn't. And this might be one of those games where Stanford wins a game that they shouldn't. Stanford, with eight returning starters on defense and a very strong secondary, I believe, shuts down Chase Garbers and does just enough on the ground this time on offense to beat the Golden Bears. California drops that game, and I believe they lose their season finale at UCLA. A Bruins team that showed significant improvement last year under Chip Kelly and now returns 19 starters, including Dorian Thompson-Robinson at quarterback. And just one other thing on that. Last year, UCLA beat California 34-10. to And I know there was so much going on there. California dealing with players that were out. Obviously, everybody dealing with COVID. Take it with a grain of salt. But if UCLA can win by 24 last year, and we expect UCLA, UCLA to be better this year than they were last year, at home, senior night for the Bruins, I don't see them losing to the Golden Bears here. Don't think they win by 24, but I do think they win. And that's going to give Justin Wilcox and California a 7-5 and five record going into 2021, or by the end of 2021. 7-5. Maybe not where they want to be. Maybe disappointing for some, but still good enough to go to a decent bowl game, a chance to clinch an 8-win season, and a chance again to continue to carry more momentum into 2022. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos. Also, make sure to check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Make sure to go give that a look and sign up today before the season begins. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.